So we're having some new issues on the Anchor 767. I logged out of my account, logged back in, and then there was a firmware update available. And some of my viewers said that the new firmware can actually fix some of the problems I was complaining about. But the firmware upgrade keeps failing. It literally goes halfway through and then it just stops working and it says update failed. Also, you can hear the clicking right now. Let me show you. And it will make that noise all morning. It is very annoying. Let's try the firmware upgrade one more time and see if it works. Oh, here we go. The update will fail when recharging via DC. So we need to disconnect solar. That's good to know. Okay, hopefully it will work this time. I just want these devices to work, you know? Why would they release this to the public if it still had issues? It's like we're all beta testers now, the consumers. We always have to find the issues, tell the company, and then in all my videos, it makes them look bad because the software is not functioning how it should. And the version of my firmware is 1.1.0. The one I'm downloading right now is 1.1.7. So did I miss seven different updates? Jeez, this is a new product. You think the firmware would not have to need that many updates, holy cow. Most of the issues with solar equipment is the software. Almost every single issue I've had in the last year or so is software related, not hardware. When I first started this channel, almost all the issues were hardware related. And it's so strange because these are such simple devices. The software is not that complicated. Okay, we're almost done, come on. Because if we can get it to work, this thing would be pretty darn sweet. I actually really like this thing. I mean, even the buttons are so nice. Update successful. We've got screen timeout settings, that's good. We're gonna put that to 30 minutes. All right, I'm gonna connect the expansion battery and run it for a couple days and see what happens. Actually, let's see if it connects and starts charging right when I connect it. Have you noticed how quiet this shop is now that I don't have the LV6548s running in the background? This thing is full output right now and you can barely hear it in this video. Oh, I haven't posted that video yet. I will show you guys what I'm talking about in the next video. Oh my goodness. I've been working on that video for so long, I just assume that you guys know what I'm talking about. And look at that. It's connected. Yeah, look at that. Maybe it's actually gonna start working. So we'll come back in a couple hours when we have more sunshine and see if it actually starts charging up the expansion battery. So we have 274 watts coming in and it's still not charging the expansion battery. Let's see what happens when it hits 100% if it will actually start charging this because one of my viewers said that that actually works that way with the new firmware. So it's been 35 minutes and it's still at 99%. Maybe it's doing a state of charge recalibration with the shunt, I don't know. So I'm gonna come back later after lunch and we'll see if it actually starts working this time. Guess what? It is finally charging all by itself. All we have to do now is see if it makes an annoying clicking noise in the morning. But this is such good news, it's actually working. Why did they not develop the software when it was first released? So after the unit charged to zero yesterday, I discharged it. I dumped all that power into my main system. And this morning it is charging and it hasn't made any clicking noises at all. So it's actually working. This is great. Now I'll keep cycling it through and see if the expansion battery doesn't connect or something else. But um, I think they probably fixed it this time. I'll let you guys know. Now I'm hoping one of these companies gets the software right because no matter what it is, inverter, these power stations, they all have bad software. They're like, oh, you have to update the firmware. You have to update the firmware. There's like four new firmware updates within the first month of release. That is crazy. Can you believe that? That's nuts. Also, think about how much money it costs these companies for customer service and support when they have so many issues when they first send out the models. Also, when you have firmware updates on inverters and you have to use USB dongles and all this other stuff, and then the customer service rep has to teach every customer how to do that update, that costs a lot of money. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what you guys are thinking. Like, you need to fix the software. The software should be solid when you release the product. It should be able to last for the next 10 or 20 years without any updates. Anyways, we got it working. I'll stop ranting. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.